Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here in the light, light snow of Spokane, Washington this morning. Um, so a couple of quick announcements. Uh, there is no virtual coffee hour today. We are doing it every other week, and uh, we did have uh, that after the first Sunday last week, so no virtual coffee hour today. Um, in the no department, um, I need to let you know that there was also no quorum uh, for the semi-annual meeting last week. Um, so the budget did not get passed, uh, council members did not get elected, and so on. So that will be moved to the January semi-annual meeting, the date of which will be decided at this month's council meeting. Um, the thing that was nice is that that gave us the opportunity to have one more of our big open houses about our long-term relationship with Communitas um, and the future of this building and all those kinds of good things. So we had 30-some people um, who stuck with us for about an hour, and we had the opportunity to share our thoughts and all of that uh, about that. So um, you'll hear more about that after the November council meeting as well. Finally, many of you have been praying for Kathy Fellman after her uh, cancer diagnosis, and you'll be delighted to know, as we all were here, um, that surgery went really well. Um, they are very optimistic. They caught it early and are very optimistic about her future going forward. Um, they're having a consultation about whether any additional radiation or chemotherapy are even necessary. So continue to pray for Kathy and for Gail, um, and, uh, and we rejoice in the blessings and the joy that comes our way even during difficult times. So uh, once again, welcome to Central Lutheran Church here in Spokane, Washington for this uh, worship service. Everything that you need should be right on the screen, or if you prefer, you can go to our website, clspokane.org, click under the This Week tab, and download a copy for yourself, either for the service today or for reflection during the week ahead, if you so desire. We begin with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Amos. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion or was met by a bear. Or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall. And was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light? and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise you festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Here ends the reading.
Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confounded. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me, turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me quickly, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. A reading from First Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not believe as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Here ends the reading.
Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Two bridesmaids took their lamps and went... Ten bridesmaids took... That would be an entirely different parable. Let's try this again. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look, here comes the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this is a fine and dandy parable to have today. Uh, most of my colleagues agreed during our weekly text study that we're never really eager to see this one come around. But there you have it. Um, most of us are lectionary preachers, so we uh, deal with them as we come along. And as I've frequently said, the Bible, being the living document, uh, moved and inspired by the Spirit of God, always seems to have something new to say when these come around. And so each time we have a parable every three years or whatever it might be, uh, there always seems to be something new to apply to our lives or to our situation. So, here we go. What's striking to me in this parable this time around is uh, what which appears to be to focus on the severity of judgment is that the right to judgment is confined to one character, the bridegroom. Judgment is reserved to the only one who can judge. You'll notice, even the wise young women don't judge the foolish ones. They merely refuse to share their oil and send them off to buy more for themselves. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know if Matthew's intent was actually to remind his people, let alone us, all this time later, that the prerogative and the power of judgment is reserved for the Lord alone. Matthew, in fact, often seems quite ready to judge others. In fact, the violence of the way in which he presents some of his parables can be particularly troubling. His treatment of the Pharisees, um, the, the way that he adds violence to the parables that he adapts and shares. At the same time, though, and again, whether consciously or not, Matthew does regularly make it clear that the Lord who comes in glory is the one to judge. Whether it is Jesus' earlier admonition in chapter 7, do not judge so that you may not be judged, or the very last of these watch and be prepared parables, in which it is the Son of Man who judges the nations, Matthew consistently reserves judgment for the Lord and the Lord alone. Now, I realize that's what struck me in this parable. That's, you know, I said that's what stood out for me this time. It's not new. When we've talked about this before, right? Judgment belongs to the Lord. It is not our place as followers to sit in judgment over anyone else. So, Perhaps this is a great time to take another shot at letting judgment be the Lord's and the Lord's alone. That is to say, I think that in everything that has taken place this week, and after months of acrimony and accusation, 
Perhaps the fundamental question before us today is this. Can we regard those in our congregation who voted differently than we did as fellow and faithful Christians? And more broadly, can we regard those in our larger community and country as fellow children of God, deserving of not just God's love, which is promised to all, but deserving of our respect as well? And by doing this, leave judgment to the Lord. Now, before you answer too quickly in either direction in this, I want you to think about it, because this is important. So before you sit back and you say, well, sure, I can, think about what we're talking about. There was a lot at stake in this election. There were very few people who were actually on the fence, and many on both sides of the political spectrum declared it a choice between good and evil. So picture the folks who supported the candidate you simply couldn't imagine leading the country, and now answer whether you can still regard them as God's beloved children. And similarly, if you're tempted to say, I'm sorry, I just can't, I can't even, remind yourself that Jesus' own disciples included someone who had worked for the Romans, another who stole from the common purse and betrayed Jesus, another who promised to follow Jesus to the very end and then not only deserted but denied him, and then, perhaps a moment's reflection on where each of us falls short might be in order, too. And finally, perhaps wonder whether, if we find ourselves imagining that God can only redeem and love those who act or think or look like me, then perhaps, just maybe, possibly, we are underestimating the capacity of the one who created all that is and raised Jesus from the dead. Now, all that said, this does not mean that the issues at stake in this country are not terribly important. They are. Nor does it mean that the decision we make about who has the best ability in terms of character or judgment or temperament or experience or empathy to lead this country doesn't matter. It does. But at the end of the day, if we cannot see each other as equally deserving of God's love and redemption and cannot therefore accord each other a measure of dignity and respect, then we have forgotten that at the root of human sin is precisely the willingness to judge others out of our own insecurity. As I'm often fond of saying, and if memory serves, I think I heard this from my professor, Dwayne Preby at Warburg Seminary, the minute that you draw a line between who's in and who's out, you will find Jesus on the other side. Now, I don't know why some of the bridesmaids didn't bring extra oil. Maybe they never imagined that the groom could possibly be so delayed. And I don't know why the others wouldn't share. Maybe they were so caught up in their own anxiety that they found it difficult to be generous. I don't know why the bridegroom was so late to his own celebration. But it certainly brings to mind the anxiety that waiting rises up for all of us. And I don't know quite what to make of the clear note of judgment sounded in this text. Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. But I do know that in the end, I trust all these bridesmaids, wise or foolish, as well as our elected leaders, our voters, our country, you and me, again, whether wise or foolish, I trust them all to the Lord, who has the right and the power to judge only because he has been willing to be judged on our behalf. I find it helpful to keep in mind that at the end of all these somewhat eschatological, which is a theological way of saying scary, parables in chapter 25, 
are these first verses of chapter 26. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. And still, knowing this, he went forward to the cross for us and for all people. Or as John says at a similar moment in his gospel, and having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for God's power to come upon the church, the world, and all in need. Responding to each petition with words from today's psalm, O Lord, make haste to help us. Holy God, rouse us to prayer and praise, both when we gather for worship and when we cannot. Sustain all those who help us to worship at this time. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O make Holy Creator, delight us with the autumn beauty of your earth. At this change of seasons, give the animals what they need for survival. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Holy Peacemaker, give peace to our conflicted nation. Quell all attempts at violence. Cure our nation from prejudice of every kind. Teach us how to abide together as one diverse people. Restore families and friendships torn apart by political differences. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Holy Sovereign, grant that all newly elected government officials work faithfully for the common good. Give them wisdom, honesty, and humility. Illumine their convictions with a spirit of cooperation. Be with the president-elect. Pour upon him and upon all his advisors a right spirit of dedication to justice and truth. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Holy Protector, bless the observance of Veterans Day. Bring armistice to areas of conflict and keep safe the military who serve in harm's way. Give to all the armed forces a dedication to defend the common good. Heal the wounds, both physical and emotional, experienced by active and retired service members. Be pleased, O oh God, to deliver us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Holy Healer, bring health and wholeness to those who are sick, those who live with chronic pain and with COVID-19. Console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Protect those in living in resettlement camps. Uphold medical, uphold medical care workers, especially in third world countries. We pray especially for those we name here before you, Brian Alm, Vern Anderson, Kathy Fellman, Karen Garrett, Rachel Hansen, Kathy Phillips, Sharon Smith, Waylon Steiner, Don Tulak, and all those we name in our hearts. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Holy Beloved, form us into a people close to your heart and receive now our silent petitions. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Holy and immortal one, we remember those before you, all who have died in the faith, especially the military and civilians who died in armed conflicts. At the end, bring us with them to be with our Lord forever. Be pleased, O God, to deliver us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Receive these prayers for the sake of him who died, rose, and lives for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of that Lord be with us all, and also with you. Please take a moment to share that peace with those you're worshiping with. And, uh, of course, if you'd like, uh, post a note of peace and greeting on the chat platform on Zoom.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, if you'll join me in our closing prayer together, a prayer for the whole human family. This is adapted from our uh, ELW, page 79, the prayer section in the front. Let us pray. O God of all, with wonderful diversity of languages and cultures, you created all people in your image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Free us from prejudice and fear. Unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth so that we may see your face in the faces of people around the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.
in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God. Thank you.